I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. It's time for more battery test results. Today, we're looking at two batteries from Infinity. We're focusing a little bit more on the budget end. You know, we've tested some high-end batteries like Thunder Powers and Tattoo R-Lines, and not everybody can afford $35 or $40 for a battery. So what about you guys who can only afford to spend like $25 on a battery? Can you get a good battery? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Stay tuned. Today we're looking at two batteries from Infinity, the Infinity Race Spec 1395C and the Infinity RS Force 1500, it's like 10 c I think it is. And Infinity has always had a great reputation for making good performing batteries at a decent price, good balance of quality and performance. How well do they perform? Well, that's what we're here to see. I want to acknowledge uh, my goal when I purchased these batteries was to purchase the top end of Infinity's line and their newest formula. And their their line is a little confusing. And I like I bought the RS Force batteries. I meant to buy the RS Force 1500 and 1300, but I, I've since found that the RS Force may not actually be their top of the line battery. They may have come out with a new one that's even topper of the line. And also... Uh, the company that I ordered them from, I, they were out of stock on the 1300s, so they subbed the regular race spec 1300s. And so if you're wondering why I bought those race spec 1300s when they're not exactly new, well, that's why. I want to acknowledge also, before we get too far in, I wish I were able to get these results out faster. Speaking of batteries... <laughs> I wish I were able to get these results out faster, but they require a lot of manual labor to, to run the tests and then the batteries have to sit for two hours to come at least two hours to come to temperature. So every test is done at a consistent temperature. One of my patrons is generously donating his time and making basically like a Windows application that is going to interface with a charger over Bluetooth and interface with the charge controller, the, 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 the West Mountain CBA you know, thing that I use to test the batteries. And it will basically let me run an entire charge cycle, or entire test cycle on a single battery just by pushing a button and walk away, come back 24 hours or whatever, 40 hours later, and the whole test cycle is done, which I hope will really ramp up my ability to test batteries and get results out to you. I know that some of you donated cash so I can buy this setup and I feel really obligated to, to then give back by producing test results and I, I wish I were producing them faster. I am working on that. No specific time frame on that, but I want to let you know that it is being worked on um the other thing i want to tell you is i know that these results are a little hard to interpret the more of them i put out the harder it is for you to get a clear answer on what what's the just the freaking best battery to buy another uh, person is working on a website for me to be able to present these results in a searchable manner dynamic data generated charts and graphs etc that is being worked on no, again, no specific time frame when it'll be done, but I do want to let you guys know that I am working on these things. Well, other people are working on them. I'm just kind of going, oh, how's it going? <laughs> Let's look at these test results now. The 1300 milliamp hour discharged uh, 1246 milliamp hours, 96% of its rated capacity. That's pretty decent. That's well within normal range of what we see. The 1500 milliamp hour discharged 1449 milliamp hours, 97% of its rated capacity. So we got numbers very consistent with the, with the number on the label. For the 1300 milliamp hour battery, it was able to discharge 86% of its labeled capacity at 50 amps, 743 milliamp hours. That doesn't, is that right? 743? 743, no, that's right. 743 out of 1300. That's not 87%, what the hell? No, that's 57%. 57%, okay, I'll fix that. 57%, doesn't seem right. <laughs> the 1500 milliamp hour pack is has a higher C rating and it's a larger pack so we would certainly expect it to discharge at a higher amp rate but you might be surprised to find that it also is rated 
a 50 amp pack. So is it equivalent to the 1300 milliamp hour? No, because we can see that at 50 amps, it discharged 1046 milliamp hours, 70% of its labeled capacity. So although these batteries both fell into the 50 amp bin, this one is much, much higher in the bin. At a 50 amps, it will discharge much longer and much, much more amps, milliamp hours rather. And at 60 amps, it very nearly, it, this battery was almost a 60 amp rated battery. It just qu didn't quite make the grade. So it was 48% of its labeled capacity. If it had done 50 or 51%, if it had just gotten a few more milliamp hours out, it would have been a 60 amp battery. So this is very, very nearly a 60 amp battery. This is solidly a 50 amp battery by my rating. In the pulse discharge test, the 1300 did three pulses at 70 amps and not even one pulse at 80 amps and the 1500 battery did five pulses at 70 amps and three pulses at 80 amps so that makes it an 80 amp battery in the pulse discharge this one is a 70 amp battery by my rating in the pulse discharge now let's look at these two 1300 milliamp hour batteries and see which one is better. The Infinity is about 25 bucks. The CNHL is about 22 bucks. They're very similarly priced, although the CNHL, sometimes you can find them on sale for even less, but they're pretty close to the same price. In terms of weight, the CNHL is significantly heavier, 179 grams versus 161 grams. So if, if quite a few more grams there, well, 10, 15 grams, is it really that much? And it does add up. In terms of performance, both batteries were rated 50 amps continuous and 70 amps a pulse discharge. But if we look at the capacity, we can see that the CNHL had a lot more capacity and is probably just a bigger battery all around, making up, meaning that that additional weight isn't going for nothing. In the constant current test at 50 amps, the CNHL discharged 851 milliamp hours compared to 743 milliamp hours for the Infinity. That's pretty close. It's a 100 milliamp hour difference, but it's pretty close. And at 60 amps, we got 603 milliamp hours for the CNHL versus 446 milliamp hours for the Infinity. So at the 60 amp discharge rate, the difference is becoming even more pronounced. I think we can say that the CNHL is probably the better battery. It's a few bucks cheaper and it performs a little bit better in both the pulsed and the continuous discharge test, although it is a few grams heavier. Well, more than a few grams. It's almost 20, 171, 81. It's almost 20 grams heavier, which is pretty significant, but you're certainly getting something for that 20 grams and you save three bucks. So about the 1500s. The Infinity 1500 is 28 bucks. The China Hobby is 26 bucks. Again, the China Hobby is just a little cheaper. If we look at the capacity, we can see the China Hobby discharged 1480 milliamp hours. The Infinity discharged 1449 milliamp hours. Very, very close to the exact same number. At 50 amps, the Infinity discharged 1046 milliamp hours. The uh, China Hobby, 1056 milliamp hours. Almost exactly the same number. At 60 amps, 724 for the Infinity and 758 for the China Hobby. Wow, these are very similar. So, what about 70 amps? We got five five second pulses, five five second pulses. These are almost the exact same battery, except that the China Hobby is almost uh, 71, 81, 91. Wow, it's 23 grams heavier. So, in this case, I would say I would definitely pay the two extra dollars for the RS Force. It delivers almost the same performance as the China Hobby and is nearly a little more than 20 grams lighter. Wow, that's mighty impressive. Honestly, that is a radical. Oh, I've got 80 amp dis pulse discharge. Oh yeah, wow, it didn't, it, the China Hobby just barely didn't make a, wow, so it even won on the pulse discharge. Okay, Infinity 1500 RS Force beats the China Hobby every which way. One more thing I want to look at real quick before we close up is I want to compare the Infinity 1500 RS Force, which is a $28 battery 
with one of the best batteries I've tested, the Tattoo R-Line 1550, which is a $38 battery. So it's $10 more, which really adds up if you're buying five or 10 batteries for a day of flying. And percentage wise, of course, it's a lot more as well. The R-Line won, it definitely won. So we can see it discharged 1582 milliamp hour compared to 1449. And it, can, it succeeded at 60 amps discharge. At 60 amps, it delivered 952 milliamp hours compared to 724 milliamp hours for the Infinity. And the R-Line completed uh, four five-second pulses at 80 amps, whereas the Infinity completed only three five-second pulses at 80 amps. So the R-Line won. But the R-Line is 195 grams. It is 10, 95, 71, 81, 91. Oh my gosh, it's like 24 grams. It's, but the R-Line is 24 grams heavier than the Infinity. And it's 10 bucks more, as you, say, as you saw there. So you definitely get more performance when going with these high-priced batteries. What about, the, what about the Thunder Power? The Thunder Power is lighter. The Thunder Power 1500 or 1600 milliamp hour is 179 grams, still eight grams heavier than the Infinity, and it is $45, way more expensive. How did it do? Continuous discharge, 50 amps or less. At 50 amps, it discharged 968 milliamp hours compared to huh, 1046 milliamp hours. Oh my gosh, 60 amps, 50 amps. Wow, the Infinity beat it. Pulse discharge, 70 amps or less, four or five second pulses, 80 amps, three. So the Infinity at 28 bucks appears to have handily beat the Thunder Power Adrenaline on every metric in terms of weight, in terms of price, and in terms of performance. So I guess the takeaway is this is a pretty good battery for the money. Not quite as good as some high-end batteries, but better than others. Before anybody sues me, Please keep it. Please remember my disclaimer. These test results only apply to the actual batteries that I tested. They probably don't mean anything. They look all this stuff. Just don't sue me. Nobody sue me. Okay. Thanks. And that's going to do it. That's going to do it for these test results. I hope that soon I'll be able to announce that there's a website where you can go dig through this data on your own and you don't have to wait for me to read it off. But until that time comes, I will definitely try to like share with you guys the comparisons that I think are most relevant. And at the end of the day, you can always go back and you can download the um, the, the PDFs from the individual video descriptions uh, and, and compare those yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching. Links to these batteries are down in the video description. And if you appreciate the work that I'm doing, then I certainly would appreciate it if you would use the affiliate links down below to purchase these batteries or anything. You don't have to buy the product. When you use an affiliate link, you don't have to buy the product that is being linked to. You can buy anything. Just click that link before you make any purchase from an affiliated vendor and it'll help me out a little bit with, uh, with the, you know, paying the rent. It's my full-time job now. You may have heard me mention that once or twice. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying. Rapid fire results tomorrow. I, I hope. I don't prom I shouldn't say that. I'm doing my best here, guys. Come on. I know you want it. I want it too. Bye.